Good morning, and well, welcome to the last hour of the Halloween event. So it looks like we've got 27 minutes left. I've done some of the tedious housework already off screen. Uh, I sent the explorers out, they came back about four o'clock this morning. And I sent them out uh, and I hope they're going to return shortly before the deadline is up. That's to maximise the return of the, the event in-game currency, which are pumpkins, obviously, with it being the Halloween event. So we can see that looks like some of them have come back already. There's some good returns. I think they're the overnight ones. Rather than the ones I just sent out. Yeah. Well, that's quite a good return. So we collect the loot. Have a quick look, see how we're doing. So we've got 6,290. Okay, that's not too bad. I've done pretty well in the event so far. I've got most of what I want. The younger Gemini General, there's just, uh, just one available. I haven't got it yet. I have about six seven of them already so it's not essential that i get them but they are useful i know at least one fellow guild member who really believes in them as the best general in the game i tend to use them in lots of different adventures but they're not really crucial to any of them i think the ones i use most are mary and uh, tremble simply because they get Better XP plus uh, Boris and Sylvana, similarly because of their XP, and I've started using Ghost uh, simply because they're so uh, so much faster in getting there. So uh, what's it? Ten minutes to start with. I think you can see on screen it says uh, next to a little ship symbol. Ten minutes travel time. Fifteen minutes for a younger Gemini general. So Ghost Channels were therefore quite good, even if you only send a couple at the start of an adventure, because they can be knocking off camps while the rest of the generals are still, you know, um, travelling through to the adventure itself. But beyond that, um, I could get the Pumpkin Mansion, but I'm not very keen. Like most higher level players, we now value the real estate on our island so much that we really don't want buildings on them that are just population related because we can use the ones that are sea based or water based anyway uh, there are plenty of buildings like that like the water mansion and um, floating residences that's really what you want at the high level of the game the ghost lantern that's kind of tempting i have some already um just wanted to show you. Yeah, they, there's none available to collect. Yeah, I'm going to need to open. They're not bad. 
I wouldn't say they were exceptional. Um, what they do is every week they give you a sort of free gift. I think it's just the one. Um, I have several from previous Halloween events. They're hard to find. They just look like a lamp. I suppose hence the name. I used to have them round. Oh, there we are. Ghost Lantern. That's it. As you, if you watch it, you can see that they move. You can move them just so you can see them more clearly. It's like this one here. That one's quite well hidden. So I've got three of them by the looks. I'll just try to move them so they're clearer to see. So, yeah, I think it's once a week. You get some sort of gift above. Um, I don't think they give buildings. If you're interested, I can have a look. But um, it's like anything towards the end of an event. Uh, <coughs> it used to be, you know, really difficult. But um, with this event, I did something that I don't normally do. And I bought some gems right at the start because I wanted... See if I can show you. I was attracted by these geologists. I got that one, tried it, and was impressed. So then I think I picked up three or four of them. I'm not sure they're worth the, uh, the money, the gems, but, you know, they're not bad. Uh, anyway... I got them rather than, well, I suppose I could only spend 1,300 pumpkins on one anyway, but I did spend some gems on that to get them out of the way. And because I did that, I didn't really pick up any of these bundles. And I don't have enough pumpkins to get the pumpkin version of the bundles. Well, not too bothered, but... Um, the Halloween Generals one. This one isn't bad because it has the younger Gemini General that we were talking about, which I could still get one of for some pumpkins. And um, I think I can buy them for six, seven thousand gems anyway during the, the game. But it's the Ghost General that's hard to get that you can't get during the, the normal game. And so <clears throat> I'd like to, you know, really get as many of them as I can when I can. Um, because you never know what changes are going to happen. At the moment, B&B are in a nightmare transition period from the old Flash-based uh, client, which I'm actually using, to one based on Unity. It hasn't gone well. It's virtually killed the game in some senses. Um, but I'm hoping that once that's sorted out, they'll continue developing the game. And as they develop the game, hopefully they'll bring in more adventures, and, you know, as they do that, you never know which generals, you know, will come to be good. Um, but unfortunately, the other two generals in this pack, the Grim Reaper and Lord Dracul, they've never been really of any use. Um, I think Dracul's a first strike, so when there weren't many generals in the game, he used to be used when you used to get a loot spot uh, in somebody else's adventure and you used to send them over. Um, you would apply skills to them to make them very quick at travelling to adventures. And then when they got there, they only really needed uh, one recruit with them. And, uh, you know, they they could then launch an attack with one recruit, make at least one kill, and, and be done. But really, we have so many generals now. Troops are so easy to get at the higher levels that um, the thought of using a general like that hasn't crossed my mind in maybe a couple of years. In fact, a lot of people will now use instant kill because it's so much easier than faffing around sending a general. And so that, that general pack I was just looking at is available for gems, but I would need to get another 10, 11,000 pumpkins. I'm not sure I'm going to get that in the last week.
as you can see I've still got some explorers coming back with pumpkins I mean it's not bad at 36 just in those three but um, I'm a long way off just 16 minutes left I'm hoping I've got the timing right and that there's a lot of these to come you can see by the green bars 14 minutes and 34 seconds and there's 16 minutes 11 seconds left wow oh dear right well that is close let's hope there's no hiccups and um, it's really a bit late to be sending the other stuff out uh, the other problem I've got oh you can see here you can probably hear the uh, the audible signals um, you can see explorers coming back now so the snowmen have just come back and here's the mail <laughs> two right two four two two these have only just been sent out maybe two hours ago two or three hours ago so it's what we call a short treasure search and so uh, they bring back the, the the minimum which is either two in most cases or four pumpkins there's a split of something like 70 30 percent uh 70 percent of the time a short treasure search will bring back the lower value which in this case is two and 30 percent of the time should bring back four uh obviously as you send them out for longer searches there's a similar 70 30 split between a higher and a lower value but the uh the lower value is still you know higher than on the uh, shorter searches but I didn't have time. Uh, they went out overnight, and as I say, I didn't get up particularly early this morning, but it was, it was about six o'clock. So I had enough time to send out, I would say, 80% of my explorers on these short searches. And as you can see, they are arriving thick and fast now. So with 14 minutes left, a lot of them, it isn't, it isn't actually close. Seven minutes, seven minutes, seven. Yeah, they should all come back. These are quite good. They're known as lovely explorers. Um, they tend to bring back the maximum amount they can. So let's have a look and see what that means in effect. Lovely treasure. So this is one of the lovely explorers. And as you know, she's brought back four, four, four. The advantage of the bewitching and lovely explorers is they always bring back the maximum amount so like I said if there's 70 30 split uh, in favor of the lower amount for normal generals these uh, what are called lovely generals stupid name but there you go these pink ones here female ones and these bewitching ones they both bring back the maximum amount every time and the advantage of this one is that um, it'll also bring back twice as much so in other words if we were to find I don't know if I can by look just see ah this might be one yeah bewitching a bewitching general if you notice it's two lots of treasure that it's brought back and like the lovely one they're both the maximum amount that's why you should always, always, always take advantage and get the bewitching explorers when they're available. Um, there was one available in this event, and I've made sure I've got it. As you can see, the, the explorers are coming in still. So now the event's going to be over in, in 12 minutes. Sort of, what do you do with these? These are the explorers that we send out during the events and they, they bring back pumpkins or footballs or whatever is the event currency. And um, the rest of the time, I think at a lower level, you would click on and you would probably send them out on a, a treasure or adventure uh, expeditions. Now, if you go off... Uh, on an adventure search obviously the aim is to bring back adventures and 
your alternative, obviously, is treasure search. And these are what we've been sending them out on for the last three weeks, non-stop. But there is another one. There are two, actually. There's the rarity search and artifact search. I never used the rarity search. I did when I was a lower level, because it used to bring back things like beans, which were hard to get hold of. But the truth is, it's it's not worth the effort. These are the ones that are better if you're higher level, and certainly if you're producing stuff with your buildings. So an artifact search. So if you click on that and send it off, seven hours later it will come back with very often buffs of some kind. And the one that you're really looking for are the rainbow snow buffs. But there are other useful ones, magic tree buffs and things. We all have our favourite ones, or the ones that are most useful. And it's a numbers game. It's as simple as that. Get as many explorers as you can particularly during the events like now and um, and send them out so my problem is that I ran out of rainbow snow about a week ago and so all my gold production has essentially stopped apart from this one which good timing I used this buff Christmas market buff click on that and as you can see the area covered I've put all my coinage here. So when I click on that, for the cost of 500 gold bars, of which I have quite a lot in stock, I get a plus 300% output for 12 hours. That's the same level as Rainbow Snow, but only for one eighth of the time, 12 hours. Rainbow Snow lasts for 96 hours, four days. But nonetheless, this is yeah, essentially free. Uh, Rainbow snow <laughs> probably would cost you three to four thousand, so it would cost you equivalent of roughly five hundred gold coins for twelve hours of its time. Um, but that's just for one building, in this case, one coinage. But this one, when you do that and that, what you'll notice is all of these will be buffed for twelve hours for the cost of. 500 gold bars. Having said that famous thing, you do it and then nothing happens. There we go. It's done it normally. You get a, a, a list down the, sc the screen of uh, a dialog box is saying that it's been buffed. As you can see now, that building was the Christmas market level 4. And you can see Christmas market buff level 4. 12 hours. So this coinage now, let me click on the right one, there we go. So here's a coinage, and as you can see, it's now producing 48 coins from 24 bars. That's uh, sort of eight times as much. Rainbow snow, and this effectively gives you four times the input, but I've also got running a prestigious friend buff. Uh, it's got another seven days to go. Now, um, PFBs, they double the effect of any other buff that's running on your island. So, this buff was plus 300%, which, as I say, is the equivalent of four times your normal level of production. And then the PFB doubles that to give you eight. So, it's a cracking way to, to make the most. Because otherwise... As you can see from that, 24 gold ingots would only produce 6 coins. Now I'm getting 48. This is how you sort of make money in the game. This is how you, you, know, you stay ahead. You can use Christmas markets elsewhere. The problem is that you can only run one at a time, you see. I've just launched it, it's a 7 hour cooldown. So it's seven hours before I can launch another one. So I can't have more than one running at the same time. I think there's a bit of a bug with it as well. Because uh, I found it that I couldn't launch it even after the seven hours was up. Because the other one was still running. So the gold one that I just showed you, that we just set going, you can see, runs for 12 hours. So until it finishes, 
I can't use another Christmas mark anywhere else on the island. I mean, it must be a bug, because otherwise, you know, why bother doing it? Well, this should soon disappear, Supreme Golem. Uh, unfortunately, you require glistening water to get rid of them, which you require platinum ore to create, and platinum ore is very, very rare in the game. And to be honest, I, I'm not sure it's worth the effort. By that I mean buying it, you know, uh, worth the effort of buying it. But just for the, what is it, 130 pumpkins? Maybe it is. But people know the value of it, and you can pick up platinum ore. I used to get so much platinum ore for swords. I think I used to get, like, uh, 50,000 platinum ore, something like a 1,000 swords, which is worth about 1,000 gold coins. Now, I don't know... That would probably be worth several hundred thousand gold coins. Right, so with six minutes to go, I'm assuming most of my... If they're coming in, they're almost... Oh, three minutes, 33. I did time this well. There were some like this one, seven days to go. These couldn't actually launch a short search in the time available. So I've just launched them on the normal, uh, in their case, a treasure search. But as I was saying earlier, what I would do most of the time is send these out on using the treasure search button, but on an artifact search. Now in this case, I can't, because this one is, it happens to be an explorer that's very good at fetching adventures back. She will produce two adventures instead, just the one, unfortunately. I don't really need adventures. Not all adventures can be brought back by explorers, and those that can have quite a lot of, as you can see here. So I sort by amount. So I've got a thousand there, 900, 700, 700. There are obviously some that I've only got a few of. There's a few ones that are left over. I'll probably to use that one at Christmas, Easter. That's one of the highest ones there is. So I've just got the one. So very hard to get hold of. The problem with the game and adventures is that the adventures are repetitive. They don't really change. Well, actually, there's no point in qualifying that. They do not change. Adventure to adventure. The enemies are the same, they're in the same position, they do the same thing. You use the same troop numbers to defeat them. So it's an exercise that's perfect if you suffer from OCD. If you don't, then like me, you find yourself resisting doing them, unless absolutely necessary. It's a shame that they couldn't come up with um, a better system. I suppose a lot of people would just find it annoying if uh, every adventure was, was different because they'd have to work out the attacks. But personally, I'd prefer to see something like that where the adventures were different. Um, as long as the rewards were bigger. So you make the rewards ten times the size. So you have to do just one tenth of the adventures to get the same rewards. But the adventure is, you know, requires some thought, some some skill. It's a game. We're meant to be playing it for fun. A lot of time, it's a bit like form filling. <laughs> you know, every time the form is the same and you've got the same answers and you have to fill it out four or five times a day. Oh, that was a bewitching one. Just come back. Yeah. As you can see, most of these that are coming back are only bringing the twos. Returning from the short adventures. <laughs> May as well collect them. <laughs> right, these and now threes and sixes instead of twos and fours, and that's because the one coming back are lucky adventures. 
they've got this lucky leaf. They do things faster. And there's a chance to find an additional buff. These were some of the earliest um, explorers that you know, we had in the game. They were great when we first had them. And as you can see, they're not doing a bad job now. So if we have a look, event resources 680, uh, sorry, 6,809. Oh, it's not too bad. Um, probably start doing some trading now. Let's see what I can pick up. So I'll have a look at last night's. Oh, not so good, a few things that didn't sell, but we had a cracking day yesterday. So it's, uh, it's understandable if a few things didn't sell. To be honest, some of these, I was just selling them uh, because I had an oversupply of them, like uh, the horses. Twenty nine seconds to go. And that's it. The event is officially over. And now the counter is reset to seven days. This is the basically the, the countdown so the event is over but we still have seven days in which we can trade the pumpkins so because the event is over we cannot collect any more bring any more back in so the explorers will return without pumpkins now and um, that's why it was kind of important to get as many of my explorers back as I could before the deadline. Um, we can also, and I have made one mistake, we can also still collect them from the cemeteries. But um, some of mine haven't got enough pumpkins to last till the end of the event, which is a shame, but... Um, as you can see, I've done quite well with the, well, I've done very well with the event, so I aren't overly worried about that. I did make sure my noble pumpkin cemeteries were fully stocked, so they're the main ones. Uh, they produce output every 40 minutes. I get eight pumpkins every 40 minutes, whereas like the common one, it produces eight every two hours and 40 minutes, so... I'm not. I'm not too upset. Um, I mean, I can probably still buy some if I wanted to. Um, I could buy some in the trade. Here we go. But I'm not too bothered, particularly at those prices. I mean, I was selling them for a factor of two. Now they're at a factor of 
No, I don't think I'll be bothering. Besides which, I mean, I could just offer cash for pumpkins. Or grout. That's what I mean about platinum ore. 40,000 gunpowder for 150,000 platinum ore. So when I sell gunpowder individually, I could make that worth once about 180,000. So that's roughly the equivalent of 180,000 gold coins for 150,000 platinum. That's frightening. I'm presuming the next building at Christmas or whatever that uh, B&B introduced into the game will eventually be some sort of way of getting more platinum because there is a definite shortage in the game. I'm just scanning yesterday's sales to see if there's anything else I want to sell. Some of these were just sales designed, obviously, to maximise the number of pumpkins that I could get without really representing good value. Uh, In-game currency like pumpkins and footballs and uh, was it Valentine's hearts, they're always, they're always poor value in many respects. So now that I've only got a couple of items I really want, I'm just wondering whether or not to keep sacrificing products for pumpkins or to put a more realistic price on them now because I'm not really that bothered. Uh, I'm not really that bothered about getting more pumpkins if you see what I'm getting at. I could just revert to selling for coin or exchanging. Have to see. Oh, look, uh, let me have a look at crowd. So, a thousand grout for two twenty pumpkins. So, I know what I can get for a thousand grout in gold coins. Hmm. Yeah, it seems to be undervaluing pumpkins. One of the few tips that I'll give you is um, with something like this. Let me go back here. Uh, 1,000 grout you can get 85,000 gold coins for. So roughly five times that. 
So. Let's value in that at about 400,000. It's not bad if you can get it. Um, I don't know, I've sold quite a lot of grout. Maybe I ought to hold on to it. I do have some buildings. Uh, I've got the three Halloween residences uh, that are in various stages. Let's have a look. These three are last year's level 12s. This one's not far off. Um, I've already paid for the last uh, extension to level 12, but these two, I think one of them will need more grout. Oh, that one's just paid 5,000 grout. 10 to 11, yeah. Um, uh, the truth is I'm not 100% I'm not certain uh, what to do. So I'll have a quick last look. The trade office is quite confusing at, uh, at a point like this during an event where it's it's gone from being active to the passive phase. Um, people don't really know what sort of prices to put on. Um, for me, I think it's probably just as good a chance to get rid of some of the overstocks. Let's have a look and see. Yeah, I've got plenty of cannon. The difficulty is you have to check all the time because look at the, see, the price difference there. It doesn't matter who's offering it, it just indicates what I'm saying. There's no real set prices during events for product. It's what people have an excess of and what they want to bring in. So doing a quick uh, back of the envelope calculation, uh, Canon, I can sell them for anywhere from two and a half to three and a half thousand gold coins per thousand. So that's 20 times, so that's like 60 odd thousand. Probably 50,000 to sell that many. So 60 pumpkins, you know, that's valuing 1,000 pumpkins at about a million gold coins, which is where it was at the start. Today it's more like 750. So. If this were a competitive market for this one product, I would say you'd be looking at maybe, you know, three or four people looking at maybe 50 pumpkins. Uh, you get the odd person who's trying to queer the market or are desperate to sell, might offer them for 40. I think most people would go above 50 to maybe 60, maybe 75, maybe even 90. Um, the only way to fetch maybe 190 pumpkins is if you're the only seller in the market and it's quite a rare product or it's really in demand. I've never found cannons, they're in a constant trickle demand, but people aren't necessarily that keen to, to take 20,000 off you unless you've got a really good price. So I don't really need to sell that. So I'll look at something else instead. So there are no Damascene swords for sale, and they normally sell quite well. And I've got a lot in stock. So...
So essentially with that offer, um, I've got a lot of stock, so I'd like to offload a lot. Hence the large lot size, 30,000. Uh, for a lower level player, that's maybe too much. However, if you're a lower level player who's unlikely to be able to reach uh, any particular product that they would they would like, like say uh, Gemini General at 7,000 pumpkins, if they've got a couple of hundred pumpkins left and they buy that, that will keep them able to build elite soldiers for maybe a year. And the benefit of using elites is that the adventure will go by a lot quicker. Battles will be conducted more quickly. Less sitting around waiting for adventures to finish. But also, they could sell off lots of that at a thousand a piece. And they could bring in up to 4,000. I mean, if they sold all of them, they could bring in maybe 120,000 in coin. Now, arguably, they may be able to sell the pumpkin for more than that if they want to directly. But at least it gives them some uh, choices later on in the game, outside of the event, to bring in some cash. I'll look at gunpowder next. So when I'm looking at this, I'm thinking, well, if I want gunpowder and I haven't got platinum ore, I can't buy any. So I may as well give the lower level players a chance. Oops. Now there, there comes a point when you're you're pricing stuff or you're doing stuff like this where you're you're trying to give players a chance to buy a smaller, more reasonable amount of a product. But as you can see, it's not the six gold coins it costs to list the item that's important. It's the fact that really you can only list uh, I think nine items uh, before you have to start spending gems. And I never spend gems when listing goods for sale. So this is taking up one of my nine slots so i don't mind you know trying to offer things to help other players in the game but equally i want to return off that because that's going to occupy that slot i may only do two or three listings of products a day and you know very often people don't necessarily react to a good price anyway so i don't mind doing a favor but i'm listing it at 10 pumpkins which is more than it's worth um, purely because you've got another choice. You can buy 40,000 for 150,000 platinum ore. That's your choice. Um, if I set it this anyway, somebody may well come along and try to undercut it, which is what they do. Of course, that's that's business in the game. And if they undercut it to uh, 7, 8, whatever, that's fine. I can just delete it and, and sell something else. So you're always making these compromises if you want to use the trading office to your advantage. Um, but equally, if you have stocks of goods, there's nothing wrong with trying to help other players by listing them for sale. See, there's no aquabuses for sale.
And the same just applies to the to the Aquabus. They're not worth 10 pumpkins, but I'm using up a slot to offer them for sale. There are none for sale otherwise, so it means that people who need them to be able to build troops at the moment are stuck, or they're having to beg off other people in the guild, which is he's never a good look. I mean, it's okay when you're a lower level, but you know the Aquabus is for elite troops, meaning that really you're a level 50 player or above. If you're a level 50 player or above, you shouldn't be asking other people. You should be trading in the game for supplies. You shouldn't be asking for handouts. That's just, I mean, I I just never asked for handouts. I suppose this is why my island is an economic powerhouse in one sense. It's because I always built everything for myself, as in real life. You know, you, you do what's necessary to get what you need. And just getting handouts just means that you just become dependent throughout the game, so you end up being level 60 and asking people for coal. I mean, that's ridiculous. And there's uh, cannons. I mentioned them earlier. Uh, that's what I was selling for them for yesterday, uh, 49. I said 50 was about a fair price. 
So, yeah, 49. Yeah, I'm happy with that. But people weren't buying anyway. Look, I had three left over. That's what I mean. Sometimes you set um, what is a, a fair price in many respects. Um, I mean, 50. Uh, what's that? What, three, five, um, just trying to do my... Yeah, I think uh, 49's a, a fair price. Um, I'm just trying to do a you know, calculation. It's not the cheapest, but... Uh, well, it's the cheapest. It would be the cheapest today. I suppose you could sell them cheaper. But they... The one thing that I, I noticed with the trading office, perhaps not so much now, but it used to be in the early days when there were a lot of committed players playing the game. And trading was one of the few ways you could actually get stuff. Uh, one of the things that I noticed um, was that if you lowered a price, it stuck. And it was very difficult to raise it again. So... You know, you know, when you when you just start, you're, you're building everything and you're trying to sell dribs and drabs here and there, and it's difficult to make money. And uh, the funny thing was, one day I just thought back to my old economics A level, and um, it's something uh, economic theory to do with specialization. Uh, essentially, if there's two islands trading. If each island specialised in one item that the other couldn't make or whatever and then traded, it, it, it's better for both. It, it's something like that anyway. And what I realised was that um, I might be better off just focusing, producing one product and the chain. So, for example, um, I chose steel swords. <coughs> Excuse me. I chose steel swords. Which means obviously I needed to be able to be good at producing iron ore and coal and then making steel and then from the steel and so on, you know, making the swords and uh, and that's what I did. And then uh, I was doing okay and uh, I was selling quite a lot and it was really helping my economy take off and that was great. But then I noticed there were a couple of players coming in. I remember one guy, I think he was Russian. Anyway, they they came in and they suddenly decided that uh, Steel Swords was, you know, uh, worth doing because they could see I was selling regularly. But they were going to reduce the price to sell even more. And the truth was, again, economics will explain it, but, you know, everybody reduced the price with them. So it made it cheaper for the people buying the swords, but we were making a lot less. And the problem was that the price stuck. Like I say, this is the whole point of what I'm saying, is that if you reduce prices, then the the other players kind of expect to be able to buy at that price in the future. So if you put the price back up, they become resistant, they don't buy, you don't make a sale, and then, in a, in a sense... If that happened with all products, the game would or the trading would almost stop. Anyway, going back, I I was a bit fed up because I put a lot of time and effort into becoming very efficient at making swords and uh, was making reasonable money off it. And so I just increased my prices back to what they were, and then in fact to higher than that because I think I was about six hundred, and then I eventually increased into about eight hundred. And effectively, I just refused to sell at any other price. And what was interesting was that the other players that had come in, they didn't understand what I was doing. They'd come in, tried to undercut me, which they had done. And all of a sudden, they were sort of thinking, well, if he's selling 800 and he keeps listing it, he must be making 800. And slowly but surely, they started moving their prices up until they were competing with me around the 800 mark. Uh, there's no real punchline to the story, except that the 800 price stuck for about five years after that. And 
the truth is it enables sort of more people to come into the market. But the, the one advantage is that I'm just saying if you focus on one product, you stick with it, don't be tempted into reducing the price willy-nilly, even if you think other people are selling loads of it at a much cheaper price. They may be not, as I can show you on the screen here. You know, those cannons at that price is as cheap as probably most people have sold them during the uh, at the event and uh, nobody wanted them you know and the horses here that's not a bad price actually for 200,000 horses and in fact I did sell out on one batch but again here's another batch nobody's interested low, low prices don't guarantee sales in the game it's as simple as that You have to be very observant in the game uh, to make money in the trading office because you you can end up selling stuff so cheap. I mean, the, the cannons are a particular case in point. I mean, I'm selling them largely because I've made loads of them in the past. Um, when we used to sell them for about three and a half to 4,000. And it was great. You, you could make a profit at that. But I calculated that any time I sell under 3,000, I'm really not making anything. I'd be better off just not producing them and just keeping the raw materials. Um, the only reason I can sort of make or sell them now at that sort of price is simply because um, I've been able to move my production across to here. And uh, that's just a bad example. I'm, I'm, I'm using uh, smoked fish sticks, but actually... So Christmas Bakery is what I normally use. I'm going to use that for weapons. And it means that it, this buff halves the input cost of producing something whilst tripling the output. That's about the only way you can make a profit on cannons in the game. And uh, I forgot I'd done that. So there's not a lot of point. Oh, and also having the prestigious friendship buff applied. You're going to need that as well. So that's um, a buff that helps to take off an existing buff. Otherwise, you have to sit around for days to wait until they brought that into the game. It was terrible. If you made a mistake, buffed an important building with the wrong thing, you literally had to just, you know, watch stuff being wasted or switch it off completely. Which, when you're at the start of the game and you need every building to work for you, is very frustrating. Just like not being able to get rid of this one. Great. Another bug. So this one's like uh, the one you saw earlier on. If I highlight it, move out of the way. The green grid shows you all the buildings that's going to benefit from the buff when I play it.
And there you go. That's what was missing last time. The notification. So now you can see. The cannon. Is now producing. 36 cannon. For half the output. Of the unbuffed amount. Which would be what, 6 cannon. You can actually make it better. There's another buff in the game. So you go to your star menu. Go to your buffs tab. And uh, look for the ones with the green outline. Because they apply to the whole map. And there we are. This buff increases it. It's only for four hours. But uh, gives you 200% output improvement and it stacks with the existing one so if I click on that now yes apply there we go it's telling me that the the whole zone has been buffed we look now at the the cannon now instead of just 36 it's producing 48 cannon for the input, or half the input of uh, six. And as I say, without that, I wouldn't have been able to compete with the much higher level players who were, from my perspective, were selling cannons at below cost. So if you want to compete, That's interesting. I don't know if that one arrived after. Right, I'm just wondering whether or not that um, explorer arrived back just before the end of the the event. So I'll go through the star menu, find out what's being produced overnight, add it to the mayor's house. Oh, and this, um, this, you, you, you'll music. If I click on this, it does a, a zone effect of 700% output to weaponsmiths again. So, I'm going to click on that. You'll hear the music change. Let's go back to those cannon. Right, so if you remember it was 36, and then we applied the uh, zone buff and it became 48 output. And now you can see the output is 90. And that's the benefit of the concert halls. Now if you remember earlier on, right at the start of the stream, I was talking about the generals and about you know collecting generals and some generals we don't use and that are kind of waste of space. And some generals like the ghost ones like uh, this one I already have quite a lot so why would I buy more and I said well because you never really know when B&B &B begin to develop the game again you don't know you know which generals are going to be um, necessary for the new adventures and so on and so forth and the concept building was a purchase quite similar um, 
when it started, when it came out, I think it was last Christmas, or maybe the Christmas before, um, all it did was, I think, these three Christmas carols. And all that did was affect recruitment. As you can see, it was a plus 700% output to um, the barracks. Which was okay, but from my perspective, I have a big standing army anyway. I don't really worry about production speed in barracks. So I wasn't that bothered. But luckily I got them anyway. Because the next time they, they actually added these two songs to the output of the concert halls. But their effect was totally different. It was plus 700%, which is a huge boost, of um, output to weaponsmiths. No doubt the game testing had proved that it was okay giving people the means to in increase the output of barracks by 700%. But what was the point if you didn't have the weapons to arm those troops with? So you couldn't create them. And so this enables you to do that. And of course the other thing is the more that you own, the shorter the cooldown. In other words, the more often you can apply it. So the cooldown is now down to 2 hours and 40 minutes. Yet it works for an hour. So that just means so 1 hour and 40 minutes after this buff ends, I can set it going again. And if they do this at Christmas again, and I get another 3 buildings, that cooldown is going to drop probably below 2 hours. Which means that my weapon output is going to be you know, increased by 700% for 50% of the day, maybe. It'll be very difficult to um, to compete with, you know, anybody using that kind of power. Um, in fact, you're going to have to have it to compete, in a way. Otherwise, you're going to end up having to accept the market price for the goods that you sell, the weapons. And that means you're going to lose money. Because the, the big players they're going to be using all these buffs so it's just um, it's just a thought it's just to point out not just the benefits of the concert hall but also the the benefit or the point behind buying products in events that seemingly aren't worth having but then you discover that B and B, 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 they've they've um, added something to it. They've added a function or functionality to it, <coughs> which means it's much more valuable. But we all make mistakes like this. I mean, my biggest mistake was not understanding the value of these things, love trees. This love tree is very much like the Christmas market that you saw. So I click on it. Here you go. So you can see it again. So if I were to select that, you can see the green area. In fact, uh, this is sighted quite badly, really, but it gives you an idea. Um, all the buildings covered by the green area will be positively affected by the output, and that is uh, a 600% output increase. Now, I didn't really see the point of this at the time. It was just another one of these things. But... What this does is this token mint here. Right, this is another thing that this building is available in this event and people don't really understand its value because they look at this and quite understandably because I did exactly the same thing. You think, bloody hell, that's poor value. 224 oil, 32 titanium bars to get just one token. You say, oh dear God, that's terrible. And I did, I did, just didn't see the point. But to cut a long story short, when you've got the prestigious friendship buff applied and you use a love tree, for uh, the love tree only lasts six hours, but what you do is you switch it on when this is coming to the end of its three and a half day cycle. Okay, so okay, here's one. It, it, I've got them stopped so they don't accidentally complete the cycle when I'm asleep or whatever and I can't switch the love tree on. Because you may not know this, that if, although a building has stopped 
the clock runs in the background so that when you turn the building on, very often you get instant production for the first cycle. So I'm going to do this now and the green bar will show, oh, almost complete. Production will be finished in just 12 hours. Okay, so in 12 hours I'll be able to, to do this. Then it's going to turn it off again. So <clears throat> what will happen is in 12 hours I'll turn the love tree on and what I'm trying to explain is that believe it or not the love tree and the premium friendship buff boost will turn that one token into 22 for the same cost okay so that's 224 Okay, so sorry for your background noise, but uh, somebody using a vacuum cleaner in the background. So, essentially, uh, as I say, this is 22. I've acquired this extra token mint, so now I've got seven of them, which means three and a half days, so that's two cycles a week. So if I manage to get it just right, um, seven times 22 it's 144 sorry <laughs> seven to seven mints times 22 a cycle that's 144 two cycles a week that's 288 tokens a week just by using a token mint which i didn't really think anything of but i just kind of collected at the time Plus the love tree, which again I collected during the Valentine's event, which didn't really work. And then suddenly you put them together and magic happens. I know some people have been using the, the love tree by placing it next to the pumpkin output. Which um, I think I did, but I've never used. No, I didn't get around to it. Again, you could do that and for six hours. Um, you know that will boost your output its real advantage will be with noble pumpkins it'll boost them because every 40 minutes so within the the four or six hours whatever it is that the love tree boosts your output every cycle is going to benefit what is it um, let's try and see yeah it's, it's just four hours you see the advantage of using it with the token mint is the token mint only produces every three and a half days so that They'll all, they'll all come together. They'll all produce at the same time. So, um, I just have to work out when uh, they're going to, you know, the three and a half day cycle ends. Turn that on. Collect. Turn them all off. Turn that off and it's kind of done. Whereas with the pumpkins, um, it's a bit harder. The, the truth is, uh, I am wrong about one thing here because I don't want to mislead you I mean this is how I use the, the love tree but there's one thing look the cooldown is only one day 16 hours now like I say these things it's three and a half days their cycle so you do have the opportunity if I double that it's two days 32 so it's three days four hours I could actually run a cycle of the love tree in between these I'd have to be more organized but essentially it means that um, you remember how I had Christmas markets in different areas that one there and the one that's switched on well the love tree is the same thing um, I think I've got three of them so sorry somebody's drilling now this is like your worst nightmare coming true as a content creator right so um, there's a love tree and there's one so essentially, I could turn this one on. Um, turn it, look here. This would give me level one, 600 output, 100 input. Trouble is, if I use that now, then the token mints on the other location will be switched off. So really what I need to do is be more um, organized about, you know, um, like a timer I need to know when the love tree cycles 
uh, start and end so that I can I can get this so I can, what do you call it interstitial uh, fit an interstitial one in between the cycles that I use down here for the token mints. That way I'll, I'll get the extra benefit. And it's a substantial benefit. But again, it's what I'm saying is you just don't really know uh, what the benefits are of some of these event buildings. I used to find the event buildings very confusing and um, it would take me ages to work out. I, I, I would look at them and think, oh yeah, I want that general, that's good. And I want, you know, that simple building, um, an extra uh, recycler, fantastic. The simple stuff was easy to understand. But very often events have things like these black trees. And unless you, you get them during the event and give them a go, you don't actually know whether or not they're worthwhile. I mean, sometimes they don't work out. Um, look at buildings here. Here's a collection of some buildings that haven't worked out. Uh, there's one I'm thinking of, if I can just find it. There we go, titanium ends. I've obviously placed them and got rid of them before because um, they haven't worked. I mean, who knows if I hook them up with Love Tree. I did use them with the Love Tree, but it just didn't seem to produce enough benefit. They really didn't. Um, but again, I think the Black Tree confused a lot of people as well. This one, uh, simply because when you get it, you've only got the one thing it can do. And you have to spend pumpkins to add on all these extra abilities to produce, as well as buy the trees. You see, it was kind of obfuscated because the black trees come in pairs. So you buy one and you buy another. And then you have two buildings with a 200% speed increase. I bought two more of each this year. So now I've got four with a corresponding speed increase. But at the time you get the first two, you sort of think, you know, yeah, black tree pollen, certainly good, you know, maybe. Um, but it also depends what you have to use to, to get it. So I haven't got a lot of sausages in. I've got loads of flour. Um, right. I don't want to get distracted. What I'm really getting at is that the, the black tree benefits were kind of hidden because it was so complex. You had to get one tree, then another tree of a certain colour. And then people were trying to say, well, do I get one tree of each colour first and then add the second if I can afford it? But then to add these extra, I'll find one. This is a fully developed one, you can see by the size. If I go here to this blue one, I've got four now. But this one, as you can see by the size, See how small it is compared to the others. It's because I've only applied three buffs. Now, if I want to add the other facilities to it, look, I've got to spend more pumpkins. Without that, it can't produce the other things that these trees can, like this one here. Black tree arrow, crystallization, black vortex. The trouble with this, and again, this makes it more complex to own and to buy and to use properly. Um, the difficulty is that some of them don't seem worth it. So it's like this one, let's see, black tree blossoms. See, this sounds quite a good idea. Epic working out, 300% output for 24 hours, even 36 hours if a friend places it. Now, initially, that seems fantastic because most of mine at the moment are just buffed. God, I haven't even got a buff running on these, but look at it. But just to show you, um, if I do buff these, um, again, sorry if you can hear the drilling in the background. Right. If I'm looking here, um, right. just trying to find it. Uh, I can recognize the symbol, can't remember the name. There we go. This one I use a lot 100% up for just eight hours. So that's 100% for 8 hours. So when I go back to this, what, uh, what this can produce 
you still think, oh, that's good. It's good, 300%, three times the amount, for three times as long. And it does sound good. The problem is, to make one, you have to use 2,000 oil seeds. Now, currently, I've only got 1,000 in stock anyway. But collecting oil seeds is a long, drawn-out business. I mean, I'm lucky I've got three sunflower farms. And presently, I still have enough fertiliser to make them, um, I think it's 900% puff. So I get a reasonable amount out of them. But a lot of players don't have that. And the only other way to get it is through adventures, those repetitive adventures we're talking about. Or to buy them in trading office. And um, I think they're fetching about 10,000 gold coins for 1,000 oil seeds now. So again, when you do the maths, we go back to the black trees that can produce them. We go here, we look at that. That's roughly 22,000 gold coins to produce this one buff, which you're going to put on an epic work yard. That's going to give you a 300% output for 24 hours. So this is my epic. Again, it's not buffed. But even if I were to put it on there, it's going to... Three, four times, what's that? It's going to make... I mean, it's going to produce a lot of steel. But do I really want that much steel? Um, I mean, it can produce Damascene swords, but as you can see, I'm already producing a lot. It's, it just doesn't seem worthwhile. It's, it's the opportunity cost, if you want to think of it that way. Um, you see that? Again, just so you can see the figures on screen. So here, Blue Bite want you to spend 22,000 oil seed, sorry, 2,200 oils to produce this one buff. So what can I do with that? So here's my oil mill. And let's get it up to 2,200. So it's going in the red now. Right, that's roughly 2,200 oil seed. That will give me 750 oil. And that's worth about 90,000 gold coins. So that's 20,000 gold coins worth of seed to produce 90,000 in under a day. So the opportunity cost of using the end buff on here and getting this to produce loads of steel is the equivalent of 90,000 oil. And oil's hard to come by anyway, and steel is common as muck. So, is it really worth it? I think the obvious answer is no. But the difficulty again, with understanding event buildings, like this one, is that in order to produce the Black Vortex, which in my opinion is worth doing, although it uses the adventure tale, um, you know, you, you have to produce that, so you have to spend two, two and a half thousand pumpkins on getting that facility before you can actually get that one. And if you want to produce black tree arrows, you also have to spend pumpkins on arcane crystallization, even though that seems pretty crap to me. Again, oil seed, granite, and that isn't one crystal, that's a shard. So we need nine shards to make a crystal. So again, you're looking at a thousand oil seeds, the equivalent of uh, four, 450 oil. It's just economically not worth it within the game. So, I mean, I'm producing black tree arrows simply because I can now. But essentially, um, last year, I prioritise getting the 10 trees. That's five plus their sisters. So that I got the speed boost of having two of each. And then I got them all up to this level where they could all produce grout because grout was the reason why I got them in the first place because it's so hard to get in the game. And although it's taken a year, I'm now grout independent. I don't have to buy grout. I've got enough grout for all my needs. Can even sell a little bit and then I got one tree up to black vortex 
and uh, this one's all the way up there. Let me just have a look. Black Vortex. That was the highest level I got any tree to last year. And, um, you yeah, know, I produced the odd Black Vortex, but essentially all my trees spent a year producing grout. And that's where I got them, and that's why I wasn't too bothered that most of them were only boosted to this level because they had a purpose and that was to produce grout. But now I want to move on. As I say, I am financially independent when it comes to grout, so it was time to move on to the next level. And the thing I couldn't do was produce black tree arrows. So that's why I've got two up to that level now. Um, it doesn't seem to be a huge market for them. I don't think a lot of people are bothered about buying them. trying to think whether or not I've actually managed to sell any. Let's see what people buy. Well clearly people are selling them at about 20 grand a piece. At this moment in time I have no idea you know, whether that's a realistic price. I mean uh, FK is a top level player and she's selling them for 9 pumpkins a piece. So that's about uh, so nine nine thousand roughly. Well, well nine thousand. So effectively, she's selling for the equivalent of what we'd sell the chocolate covered arrows, of which there's becoming a surfeit of those now in the game and in the trading area. Um, yeah, I, I suspect over the next year because. The more players at the top level will, uh, like I have done, have acquired uh, 10 trees last year and 10 trees this year. And if they're all focusing on producing black tree arrows, I think the market will be flooded with them. I think the price will drop. Uh, I'm not sure if there's any restrictions on that. Yeah, I mean, saltpeter is kind of difficult to get hold of at a decent price but as you can see I have 260,000 book fittings in storage and 4 million exotic planks so production of them isn't really a problem in terms of um, inputs I think Vortex is probably going to sell more because you've got to get map parts so I'm okay for those and Adventure Tales The good thing about Black Vortex, unlike a lot of other things, is that <coughs> uh, using them helps you build them. And by that I mean the Black Vortex helps you go through a lot of adventures quickly. And so when you put that on, you're going to make sure you get your money's worth for your three hours. So you're going to do three hours worth of adventuring. And each adventure is going to give you some adventure tales. If you see what I'm getting at. So, at the end of a session of Black Vortex, you're almost certainly going to have produced more adventure tales than you need to replace the vortex that you've used. So that's great. You know, that's self-sufficiency. And it's a shame there aren't more things like that in the game. So when it comes to black trees... Um, Obviously, I'm producing those because of the rarity value. I don't think those are worthwhile doing. Black Vortex is good. I don't think that's worthwhile because of the cost of the oil seed. If I'm a player under level 70 or who didn't like doing adventures, a bit like myself, then I would have all my black trees producing grout so that when it comes to an event like we have now and you get the event residencies, you know, the towers, they tend to want to cost, uh, I think it's 15, 17,000 grout to get a tower, a residence, a wondrous residence to get that up. I think it's, uh, it's a 10 and a 5, a 15, so it's about 16 and a half thousand grout. 
her residence. So you can see how much grout has gone into those. And those. And all the others. But you can see that's an awful lot of grout. And you know, grout has only gone up in price. I can quite easily recall only a few years ago when grout was fetching 20,000. And I remember stretching it, seeing if I get 50,000 for it and achieving it, and then 60,000 and thinking that they're never going to go for 60,000 and people snapping your hands off. And then 80,000, and then for the last year I've been producing grout but using it, as you can see, on wondrous residences and things like that. So I haven't really been selling it. And when I looked to sell, I was shocked to find that people were selling it for 99,000, 95,000. And not just one person, lots of people. And uh, for some reason, although grout is more common in the game in the sense that even more ways of producing it other than finding it in adventures, uh, the price just seems to keep on going up. So, you know, as I say, I would certainly prioritise acquiring black trees if you haven't already done so. And then upgrading them to the very least to that level getting the witch's grout that one's not bad titanium horseshoe that'll speed up your adventures um, as you mentioned use coal which is fairly common and titanium which um, yeah can take some doing but I mean you can buy titanium for three to three and a half thousand gold coins for a thousand so you could make ten horseshoes for the cost of three and a half thousand three hundred and fifty gold per horseshoe it's not really worth using anything else is it uh, I sell the bronze horseshoes uh, let me see just gonna try to work out how much they cost just gotta find out where to make them the rarity provision must be no I've screwed up you make the platinum ones here see the platinum horse shoes 20% movement that's less than the ones we were just looking at and that requires platinum to make 400 which is obviously, you know, difficult to obtain in itself. I mean, I'd say platinum's harder to get hold of than titanium. But uh, that's not what I meant. I was looking, oh, bronze, here we go. See, this is the bronze one that we, we tend to use by default. That's 15%. So you're getting that extra 10% uh, Yeah, the, the titanium, the, sorry, the blackened ones that you get with the black trees give you 25% 20, movement. Now that one lasts an hour, the bronze one lasts one hour. So for some adventures you might have to provide uh, or use two. And this lasts six hours. So it's not any faster, but it takes some of the, uh, the pressure off having to try and complete it within an hour. I mean, I know some people like to press on with the adventures and try and complete as many as possible within a, a time frame but um, you know some people like to take a more relaxed approach to it which I think is quite healthy so black and titanium horseshoe and that's only the second level now because most of the time my black trees were working on producing uh, grout I didn't really look at any of the others and black tree pollen now if you look at this is flour and sausages which even lower level players can make so that's not bad so let's have a look black tree pollen 300% output so that's the equivalent of a zombie or a rainbow snow buff uh, the only downside is your inputs are doubled so that lowers that benefit to 150%. So that makes it 
not quite as good as um, uh, red. Oh God, what is it? Red flying settler. That's two hundred percent output, but no effect on input. Rabbit lucky charm. Two hundred percent again. Yeah, that's two hundred percent. The fruit basket ones. Two hundred percent. Grilled steaks are hundred. Cookies are two hundred percent. So the two hundred percent gives you an idea. It's fairly common in the game. This is three hundred, but. As I say, if you're going to double your inputs, the effective net benefit is what, 150%. But it does last for 24 hours, so that's that's uh, quite good. But the one thing that is good is that it's a 7x7 seven seven area. So what that means is, clearly, is that um, although you're going to produce, you're going to spend that producing it, in six hours producing it, you only need one buff to cover seven by seven, which you know, obviously could be what ten. You know, an area seven by seven could include quite a lot of buildings. Um, just see if I got like tree pollen just to show you. No, I've got twenty-eight in stock. Didn't even know that. Right, so if I highlight that, so you can see, if I was to place it there, all the buildings that are showing a a blue shield with a number in it are the ones that are affected or will benefit from it. And that's two, four, six, seven, eight, nine. So that's ten buildings that would benefit from that. So you've got ten buildings benefiting from just producing one of those. And uh, yeah, it's 300% output but 100% input. So we'll have to look how can we, you know, maximise that. What I would say is if you're a lower level player, it's definitely worth thinking about because, you know, acquiring some of these others that I, that I spoke about, which are better. It's all right me saying that at level 73 or 4, whatever it is I am. But that's because I have loads of explorers that send them and I can also make these red flying settlers. But if you're relying on your explorers to find buffs for you, largely, or making these 100% outputs, then the black tree pollen one's actually not too bad. The other thing is this, it's like most things in the game, the more you think about it, the, the better you become at maximising the return. So, what I'm getting at is this, this is the black tree pollen we're looking at, okay? 300% output, only uh, inputs will double, plus 100%, right, okay. So this is a titanium smelter. So that's 6, 300% is 4, so that becomes 24, but that would double to 24, so ratio that would be 1 to 1. Okay, fair enough, you know, it's not that bad. Um, but that... And the point I'm getting at, the point I want you to notice is uh, these buildings are buildings where the inputs are quite expensive. But what if you got the output where the input wasn't as important? See here with the bakery, the input is flour and water. So flour is a processed. Okay, butcher, meat. So if I was to apply it to that, that would become 56. Uh, that would become over 100. Okay. I'm looking for something where the input... Well, what about that? What about one of the, the primary uh, level uh, production in your economy? Forget the tertiary ones like we just looked at. Forget the swordsmiths and titanium smelters because their inputs are quite costly. But if you use the black tree pollen on something like these, you see, I've, I've got these at the moment. I've got a, a grill steak on them. That's 100%. And I have to make them individually and they cost money. And every single building here 
that's got a grilled steak on it that's cost me money uh, or resources to buff and all it's doing is doubling well the black tree pollen on these just one of them would probably cover I mean I, I might be able to bunch them together better but one of them would cover most of these and they would give me a 300% output the downside would be the inputs would be doubled um, what inputs? There are no inputs. This is one of the primary level uh, um, segments of my economy. If, you, if you've ever done economics, you know, you know your primary industries are things like uh, mining, quarrying, uh, cutting down timber, things like that. Tertiary level is where you process the, the coal uh, into, say, coke, or the, the lumber into planks that's your your secondary level and then your tertiary is where you perhaps turn you know, the, the planks into uh, I don't know, paper or something like that you know or you turn uh, the, the iron ore not just into steel which is secondary but you turn then say the steel into knives which is tertiary level and uh, each level kind of adds its own profit to the whole process well here with this where you've got a buff that purports to double your input costs then use them on the primary industries where there are no input costs like this one and I presume fishing would be the same so again if you put all your fish farms together let's have a look there we go produces fish and I'm using grill steaks to do it but has no input cost so I could give these the equivalence for the day of uh, rainbow snow output and the penalty wouldn't apply to them so let me just have a quick look it's not lighting up because they're already buffed unfortunately but that's the size of the buff so if you look if you look where the crown is where the center is where the building is that you would click on it's three squares in every direction so if I was to, to click on there that's probably going to cover even with that layout. What I'm really getting at is that um, I've only really just discovered this while I'm doing this uh, this actual stream but now I'm tempted to consider looking at this given that it's so cheap to produce it's, it's very tempting to find all my primary industries and try to put them within a, a 7x7 grid and then just use them with the black tree pollen. It would certainly reduce the amount of clicking. Uh, just trying to see as well. Duration is just 24 hours. So even if a, a friend puts it on for you, it would seem it makes no difference. It doesn't extend it. Yeah. So a 300% output. 100% input but if there's no input there's no penalty I think there might be one or two buffs like that in the game and I've never really used them so I've never really you know bothered about them but it might be as you can see I've got 28 of these buffs so I may as well start using them up on my primary industries um, you know lumber that's got to be one hasn't it now I've knocked down all my pine wood and hardwood uh, logging enterprises uh, simply because it's so cheap. It's, uh, I don't have enough space on my island for buildings that I really do need, um, so I knocked them down. Now this, uh, these are sawmill. Right, that's a shame. Aha, woodcutters. Yep. 
So they do cut down trees. But does that mean... 73 there, 136 there. I've certainly got enough foresters for that. I'm just thinking out loud now. Um, this is primary industry. Cutting wood. But the, the trees are not inexhaustible. So every time they... That, right, it's saying it takes six trees to produce that. So if I was to apply the black tree pollen to this, then that should become 24. No, 48, because it's buffed, and the uh, prestigious friendship buff will double that to 48. And that would become 12. It's definitely worth trying. But they're a bit spread out, so I don't know if it'll... Oh, right. That does seem to cover all of it, apart from that one. That one there. Can't seem to get that last one in. Yes, uh, they're just too spread out. But it will cover five. So let's try it anyway. So that's five of them. Black tree pollen, okay. Let's see what this cutter does then. What does this do? So yeah, so the input has doubled to 12 and the output has gone from six to 48. In other words, it's gone by four times from six to 24 and then the prestigious friendship buff up here. That one's doubled the effect of the black tree pollen to 48. So unbuffed it was 6 to 6. So, so even in this uh, end stage here, if I ignore the friendship buff, that would be 24. So that would be 2 to 1. Perhaps not the best buff in the world, but nonetheless, if if you can place uh, your primary yeah your primary stuff together, it can save you a lot of clicking. And as I say, you know the the better buffs like the red flying settler and stuff like that you can save for more important industries right it's time to get these on their way I'll be neglecting it haven't I? right Right, it looks like I've got a lot of explorers to send out. Unfortunately, that's a 
it is a bit tedious to watch. Um, as I say, these are ones now I'm not going to bring back any pumpkins from treasure searches. So, unfortunately, they're going back to searching for artifacts. The truth is, all I really want them to bring back are rainbow snow. And then I can start my coinages again. Just applying buffs to the rarity provision house and the book binder. It's normally sort of the first thing I do, but I've been distracted by doing the stream and also the end of the Halloween event. Obviously, more important things on my mind. That's why most of these buildings are, are here next to the mayor's house. It's Press the, the number one key and this is where you come to. This enables me to keep an eye on production that needs to be renewed every day. Oh, that's another boost for the weaponsmiths. I'd forgotten about that one. Um, I'm presuming the other boost is still running. So if you remember, we were producing 90 cannon. That was the, the last figure, we had 90, and now it's still 90. All right, that's kind of interesting. That last boost hasn't done anything, or perhaps one of the other ones has run out, which is perfectly possible. Oh, maybe I was too quick. No, still says 90. It's perfectly possible that one buff is being um, <clears throat> overwritten by another one. In other words, it's there are some that uh, buffs that won't work together, that cancel e each other out, or at least one of them's ignored. Um, I know I can think of one. Here we go, this one. Love Crazed. Doubles the effect of all single production buffs. The doubling of buff effects does not stack with other buffs of this kind and doesn't apply to Epic, so. Just another tip, um, <clears throat> if you're fairly new to the game, sometimes you get buildings like this where you can queue. Uh, if you find something like stadium snacks, okay, if I want to produce 25 of them, and uh, look, I've got eight of these buildings, so I've got an 800% speed boost already, and yet. It will still take me nine days to produce 25 stadium snacks. So the truth is, you don't really need much of a queue for these. But I've got 5,970 in the queue. In fact, it would take me two and a half thousand days to run through this queue, which is about eight years. And one of the reasons is that um, I find it difficult sometimes to get people to um, star the goods for me. Uh, I suppose it's because 
I have a large storage area and it would take three or four people uh, working together to you know, be able to star everything. Um, anyway, I have found it difficult in the past to um, star goods. And so sometimes what I do is, is simply this. So I've got 1.8 million sausages in storage and I've got 4.1 million bread. So if I do that, it's nothing really. If I do that, well, I haven't got enough. So do the slider down. So that's only 180,000 sausages I've got. It's because I did this the other day. <laughs> but um, this is a way, in effect, for you to store or star stuff. So look, let me just do that. This is 36 days production. Just, it's just four cycles. So I do that. Now, as you can see, I've done this for brew and simple paper to produce fine settlers. Again, they're in the queue. And lemon tea. I don't really want lemon tea, but again, it was a way of doing water and coal. Now it can actually work like starring the products because um, if I were to cancel the queue now, all of that stuff would go into star because there's so much of it, it would it would fill the storage places straight away. Let's uh, show you. What I mean. Well, you've got sausages and, and bread, so it's like four million bread in storage anyway and just 37,000 sausage in storage. So that's 37,000 sausage in storage. Just gonna look at my star. There's no sausage at all in star. Right, so I cleared the queue, and here's a message about storage being full. It's overwhelmed the screen, so you can just see the ones about bread. So if I was to go look at improved storage now, there's the bread, which is full, and there's a the sausage, which is full. So what if I go to star now, type in sausage, and there we go. Yeah, bloody hell, how much is that? That's 35 million sausages in storage from nothing. Three, five, six. It is, isn't it? That's 35 million, 671,001 sausages, which were effectively stored in the snack stand. And presumably bread must have had a not dis oh my god yeah so bread is 76 million uh, I suppose I shouldn't be surprised that bread the, the bread seems to fill up quite often that was the one I was always asking to be starred and um, you know when you don't get any response you, you just find other ways of doing it and uh, right so Right, so, right, okay. I need to put some of these back in. As you can see, these are now absolutely choked. So, by doing that, I've created some space in the storage, which means the production lines can start again. Do the same for that. That's funny, though. obviously there wasn't a lot of lemon tea in the last queue because there's still only uh, less than a million water in storage. Although there is coal. Okay, so uh, I suppose it's worth doing a few.
So anyway, the point of showing you this was just to, to show that um, if you're playing on your own outside of a guild or you find it difficult, uh, if perhaps you're the most powerful member of your guild in terms of production and other members are all adventurous and they're not bothered about production, it can be hard for you to find ways of starring uh, goods and you might not want to ask perfect strangers to do it who you may or may not trust. Although I have to say I've only ever been ripped off once in the game. And it wasn't even this account, it was on another server. Um, generally people are pretty honest in the game. Uh, but this is a way that you can control, uh, in a way, starring certain things. It's not just this few things and that enables you to, uh, to star uh, things you've got too much of. The reason I'm doing these as single, by the way, instead of batches of 25, is that uh, if I suddenly need one or other other types producing, I auction to finish. So it's still going to take, <coughs> excuse me, it's still going to take maybe nine hours just for one. So it's like turning a liner around. There's there's no quick way to do it. But certainly, if I've got 25 stadium snacks being produced, you know, and it's going to take eight days, that really is a slow turnaround or change of production.
Hmm. No rainbow snow. Okay, so we've got our zombies. These are like rainbow snow, but they only run for 12 hours. Well, 18 if you have a killed member do it. Trouble is, when, you, when you've got so many buildings, uh, you'll be asking guild members every two minutes to come and uh, to buff um, certain buildings on your on your island. It just makes you a pain in the ass. Now, a lot of things are ticking over. Okay, but... Still need to send out my explorers, don't I? Damn it. You can see the different types of explorer in the game just by watching this. This is the adventurous explorer. She only brings back one item, but she's very fast. Even with the artifact search, it's 3 hours and 42 minutes. Whereas uh, this one, the keener explorer, she's a rarer one. Basically aimed at adventurers. Um, in fact, I've got it set up so she, she, this one can't find artifacts. I didn't bother buffing. I used this to get a bigger benefit when she looks for adventures. Unfortunately, I've got so many adventures now, I don't really need any more. So, I'll do another long one. This one's also set up just for adventures. These guys can do both. So, <laughs> artifact, about six hours. A lot of the time, the artifacts they find are not worth having. <clears throat> you know, the things like. Um, oh, what's the favourite one? Cheese sandwiches. Dear God. I have thousands of them. And I never think to use them. They only last ten minutes. You use them on the mayor's house to increase population. <laughs> And I think it's about 900%, so it's actually quite a good quick boost if you need it, but it's clearly aimed at starters, at, at newer players. You're just never going to remember to put a buff on the mayor's house every 10 minutes if you're an experienced player. As you can see just from this morning stream, the number of tasks that are involved in just keeping your island going. And it's not just because it was the end of the... Halloween event. You know, far from it. Most of what I've done today, you sort of have to do every day. If you want to be successful at the game, it is quite a commitment. I'm not saying it's worth it, it's just that it's like a lot of things. You, you get into it, you get into a habit. Um, I suppose maybe OCD has something to do with it. Or if you're on the spectrum, maybe repetitive behaviour is something that... Um, appeals to you or something that uh, catches you and uh, you find it difficult to stop. I don't really know what the attraction of the game is for so many players. But we're talking tens of thousands of players. There must be some dopamine reward along the way somewhere or we wouldn't do it. But I do wish Blue Bike would find a way of speeding this up. <laughs> Using these for uh, lovely explorers for artifact search is a bit of a waste because she will bring back. Uh, a buff but as far as I'm aware it's, it can still be anything in other words there's no maximum uh, one of her benefits is as I showed you before is that she always brings back the maximum that you can so with pumpkins that's great it means just out of a choice of four or two she's going to bring four every time as does the bewitching one but when it comes to artifact search uh, there's no real hierarchy they're all just the same as far as I know um, I've got myself questioning myself now whether or not I've ever checked 
But um, I, th I think that with like the bewitching here, you know, if we set them to bring back artifacts, they're just going to bring back any old artifact, be it the cheese sandwich or the rainbow snow. If they brought back rainbow snow every time, it'd be fantastic. Um, I almost wouldn't need any others. But I have to send out about 150 <laughs> explorers a couple of times a day. Just trying to get the handful of rainbow buffs that I need to keep the thing going. Um, but I used up 300 rainbow snow in about 10 days just before this event. So I came into the event almost with no rainbow snow. And of course with the explorers being sent out just on treasure searches, which don't find buffs. You have to send them out on artifact searches to find buffs. Uh, it meant that I wasn't able to replace any of the missing rainbow snow buffs you know, during the Halloween event. So in a way I'm quite relieved that it's over now. So I, I can get back to doing this. Although this is so tedious. I'm sorry, it must be equally tedious to watch. But at some stage I have to do it. Otherwise, you, you just forget about them, and like two hours later, you're just thinking, oh my god, I haven't sent me out any explorers. <laughs> and it's a knock-on effect, because if you're late sending them out when they come back, the next time they come back, it could be midnight, and you'll be in bed, and they'll just sit there for eight hours overnight, doing nothing. You'll find that you tailor things that you do, uh, so as to try to get explorers, geologists, whatever, to come back or be available. When, uh, it's like this one, you know, when you're when you're not asleep, so it's like this one now. Treasure, artifact, basically 15 hours. Judging by the time now, that's like 26, it's like 2 in the morning they're going to return. So now, with that, um, I could send them on a A treasure search for six hours. When they come back at before o'clock, send them at 15. So then they'll come back around about breakfast time tomorrow. So this is why you try to calculate. <laughs> this one can't go on artifact. Nearly done. You must burn around. <laughs> 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 Okay, well, I'll do it. 
Okay, well, I think that's about it for the morning session. Well, I think I need a cup of coffee. And you'll need a break. I hope you've um, learnt a few things this morning. I hope you found some of the gameplay tips useful. Uh, if you have, I'd really appreciate it if you could uh, hit the like button and uh, possibly even subscribe to the channel. That would uh, help me with the algorithm. And I should be back on later today and certainly tomorrow. That's the plan. And uh, until then, I hope you get to play the game itself. And uh, I'll see you soon. Thanks for watching. Bye for now.